House of Commons. There are a significant number of black people in the House of Commons, but they tend to be the catering staff and the, uh, and the cleaners. And as I came up in the lift, she gave me a clenched fist salute. We didn't have to exchange words. We knew exactly what had taken place. That's not to say that Obama is going to give us a clenched fist salute or that Barack Obama is going to carry through the hopes and the aspirations of the people who voted for him. But you don't have to, uh, but, but you don't have to be signed up completely to what Obama says in his stands for to recognise the hope and the expectation, expectation of change, not just in the US, but inside Britain. And I think that's important because it opens up possibilities for us. It opens up possibilities for ideas, socialist ideas and group which have been marginal, to the British working class, marginal to life inside Britain for far too long, to be reintegrated into the base of the working class movement. And this is really what we're trying to do inside Respect in East London, which I just want to spend a few minutes uh, 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 about before I end. I'm very mindful, as Jackie said, that I don't want to stand between people and their refreshments after this meeting, or certainly not between them and their, their transport, uh, their transport, their transport power. But respect came out of the anti-war movement, out of the particular radicalisation of the anti-war movement. It has been a difficult year for us. If people want to raise this in the discussion, I'll do my best to respond, but I don't want to really belabor that plan. It's been a difficult year, but one which is out of which we still stand intact, much to the chagrin of the Labour Party against whom we're fighting a by-election in Mile End East. But we gained a particular purchase amongst immigrant communities inside Britain, amongst Muslim communities, which is a reflection of the, the nature of the radicalisation of the anti-war movement. And I just want to say one thing about that, or two things about that. Of course, that in itself is not sufficient, and nobody in respect is happy with just resting upon one particular section of the working class who wants to expand and to be part of a process of contributing to wider representation for all working class people. But I will say this, I'm just standing in the audience, uh, as, people, as people came in, and I recognise, I guess what I must now call older comrades like, my, like myself from uh, 15, 16 years ago when we demonstrated together in South East London in London uh, against the British National Party, when we campaigned together in East London to turf out the British National Party Council, we were successful in that. We had to do it all again, we do it all again. But the main political beneficiaries of that movement in 1992, in 1993, in 1994, amongst ethnic minorities was the Labour Party. The Labour Party of Tony Blair and now the Labour Party of Gordon Brown. And I'm very pleased that we've begun a process of winning away a section of immigrant workers who by and large have looked almost universally to the Labour Party now to look to a new form of working class representation in respect is uh, proud of having contributed to that, as Dave said, principally in South Birmingham and in London. Which really brings me to what it is we're seeking to do. First of all, we're not seeking to claim that we are in some sense the finished article, in some sense that we are the portal through which the great difficult problem which has beset us for so many years, in one form the last 10 years, in another form the last century and a half, which is what form working class representation can take, which can advance the interests of working people in this country and indeed around the world. We wouldn't be so arrogant as to assume that we're capable of answering that question in its totality. Instead, what we're trying to do is in the areas, principally those two areas I mentioned, where we have some presence, is to try to develop a real practice uniting people of different traditions, including socialists, including people such as myself or Mark, who come from the revolutionary socialist tradition, with wider layers of new working people in a, in a context in which working class organisation has to be rebuilt or in some instances built for the first time. If you look at East London, the great bastions of working class power which were able to resist to some extent the previous crisis in the early 1970s and again in the 1980s have gone. There are no organised bodies such as the Dutch shop stewards who are capable at their best of mobilising not just themselves but a wider community around them. This has to be rebuilt. And this we're trying to do principally through an electoral intervention and at the heart of that, trying to piece together the different elements of radicalisation which are taking place. Finally, this does come down for us to being able to sustain and hopefully develop the electoral presence that we've been able to establish in these two, uh, in these two areas. I'll put it like this. There was a vote in Parliament 
earlier this uh, earlier this week. It was on removing just just some of the restrictive measures on balloting. Uh, it was moved by John McDonnell. The Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats, and the Tories all united to bury the amendment. To bury the amendment, John McDonnell was moved. The total number of Labour MPs who voted for it was just 44. That means that the vast majority of directly sponsored, directly trade union sponsored Labour MPs voted directly against the most minimal measure to make balloting easier inside this country. It's going to get worse. Even if there's a home parliament at the next election, even if that is the outcome, the number of left MPs, and I'm giving a very broad definition of Labour left, will be halved at the next election. Some very good MPs, if if the opinion poll, carry, uh, the, the, the Tories being 13% ahead, carries through to the next election. Some very good MPs, people like John McDonnell and Jeremy Corbyn, themselves could be in trouble, could be out of Parliament. What we want to try and ensure in respect, having made an historic breakthrough of electing one left of Labour MP for the first time in England for two generations in 2005, is that we can seek to maintain that and maybe extend that to one, two, three, possibly three MPs. That's not something, A, that is guaranteed, or B, that is the end of the matter. But that's what we're seriously fighting to do. It's why we're fighting very hard in this by-election in my end at the moment. And we seek to bring that, not as a victory for ourselves, but bring that as a contribution to a wider discussion, a wider party, a wider movement in which working class people can really get representation, that we would be happy if in two years' time we could come back to a meeting like this, a much bigger meeting than this, and be able to put on the table that particular achievement along with other achievements, and together, in a process of discussion, dialogue and comradeship, we could discuss and act on the very real difficulty, because there's a vacuum inside British politics. People say, how long can a vacuum continue? Well, it once continued in the United States for the best part of a century and a half. A vacuum isn't automatically filled. We have to work together to fill it, and we look forward to working alongside other people constructively to see to do that.